Hi, it's Ben. And today I want to talk about network time protocol uh, and why it matters, why it's cool. So time protocol is used by a lot of devices that you have, like your phones, your laptops, all sorts of things are using time. And it's very important that they're incredibly precise. Why? Well, in a work environment, you'll need to, a uh, computing work environment, you need to correlate logs and when things happen to make sure it's absolutely precise so you know what event occurs when. It's important in navigation, important in launching a rocket into space, it's important in so many ways. Um, it wasn't always as accurate as it is today. Back in the early 60s, they used to just use the rotation, before then, they used to use the rotation of the Earth as a kind of a constant. But that wasn't quite accurate enough, and they came up with, um, I think in the late 60s, a uh, cesium-133 clock. The vibration of cesium is somewhere in the 9,173,000 range, and it's a constant vibration, and with that they can really break a second up into, and that's per second, so they can break a second up into a lot of little parts and be consistent. And they have many, many time servers, and they actually take kind of a, uh, you know, atomic clocks, and they take them and sort of average them together. But there's a lot to consider with um, GPS, for example. You know, you're driving your car, and it sets the time, or it uses time to know where you're traveling and different things. There's a lot to account for, considering, uh, you know, Einstein's theory of relativity, the general theory. The, the satellite you're talking to is far away. So it's traveling, uh, the speed time is a little different, maybe to the nanosecond difference, but it is different and it's also moving. So, you know, you're talking to the satellite, hey, what time is it? it by the time it responds, you know, it's over here. Thankfully, the, the satellites themselves do a lot of the calculation, but there are mechanisms built into these protocols that account for the drift and all these other factors. And it's really pretty wild and exciting um, there's a great uh, article on this page behind me, not the Doctor Who Weeping Angels, but that screen, um, I'll put the link in there. It's called A Brief History of Time um, by Robert Allen. Sorry, I forgot your name, Robert. Um, uh, it was posted on um, a Cricket Liu's uh, Twitter account. I said that very strangely, Twitter. Twitter. So, yeah, check it out. It's, it's really interesting. and. Um, it's neat to have your own kind of source of time on your own network. That way all your devices are up to speed. Now, most uh, or all systems typically run an NTP client, but coming up, I'm gonna show you how to install an NTP server that then feeds its information from other um, NTP servers. So you'll kind of have your own source of time. So it's consistent, it's sweet. All right, enjoy. Just wanted to show you real quick the cesium fountain clock, the cesium-7, I actually got to see years ago at NIST, the National Institute for Standards and Technology in Colorado. And it was really cool, and it's pretty incredible how it works. If you'd like to learn more, just go to nist.gov. Um, and then there's quite a bit after that, but if you just go to nist.gov, n-i-s-t.gov, you can find out more. Super cool. Okay. So here we are in the Raspberry Pi, and let's let's uh, do what we always do before we install something, or as we start, let's do a sudo apt get uh, update. Let's just get a list of all the servers, any new packages, and then we'll um, install uh, NTP network time protocol. And in this case, it's actually called SNTP. So let's do um, sudo. Uh, well, actually, are, I wonder if it's even on the machine already. Um, no, it isn't, actually. Now that I think about it, sorry. sudo apt get install uh, ntp. Let's see what it finds. It does find um, ntp doc. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Okay, it is done. Now let's do a sudo uh, s and I think it's SNTP uh, dash, I think it's two dashes version. Lucky guess. Okay, now we're running SNTP 4.2.8 P12. Cool. Okay, let's see what it dropped for its default um, NTP.conf. I'm not, I, I never really run NTP 
on, well, I do run it on Linux, but I use dedicated time servers. Sorry, so let's start up here. There's a drift file that has to do with um, uh, different time servers giving you slightly different information, and there's a bit of a drift in transmission time. Um, there's a lot of different information here. I don't want to get bogged down on every single line. However, here's something that we're interested in. So there's um, these pools of time servers, and uh, iBurst is a, uh, a way of kind of getting time. Let's see what it has to say here. So um, maps about 1,000 low stratum and time servers. Um, we can totally just go with this. That is a perfectly reasonable I mean, <laughs> how many more servers do you really need, right? Great, so we're gonna keep with that. Uh, here's to restrict, um, yeah, so you don't exchange, uh, so exchange time with everybody, but don't allow the configuration. So we're gonna allow anybody to be a peer. Or right, it says no peer, restrict dash four, no trap, no peer. Okay, we'll see how that plays out. Um, restriction um, more closely. We should open that up, huh? Oh, okay, I'm in a read-only file here. Didn't I sudo that? No, I did not, that's why. Let's sudo that. Search down to restrict, restrict. Um, I would like to allow my entire network. This is a slash 24. I have another network as well, which I'll add later. How about that? Okay, you can broadcast. Okay, that's good for now. Um, now that we've made these changes, um, we should do a service restart. So, sudo uh, service is NTP, and we want to do a restart. Okay, no errors. That's classic, uh, classic Unix. If it's not broken, it won't say anything. Let's just confirm with a little status. Soliciting pools. Okay, so it's looking through the servers. It's trying to find them. And boop. Okay. I think it's reaching. I hope it's reaching. Um, I'm going to do a little something. So let's um, vi our sudo, always forget sudo, vi etsy hosts. If I type it right. Uh, let's add this server. Let's call it. Um, so 192.168.1.169. I guess I'll give it a whole other name, but let's call it time. And time dot dash nine computing dot com. Okay, let's see. Do we have the date command installed? We do. Do we have um <clears throat> NTP date? Was that installed? It is not. Okay. So let's install NTP date. That is a way, it's an app, application I should say, that you use to get time from another machine. NTP date. In this case, we'll just use it to look at ourselves. App get, oh, typo. So let's take a look at what NTP Q gives us here. Um, so NTPQ is a command. It, it comes installed. When you install um, NTP date, I believe it comes with it. And now I think we want to see um, peers. There we go. So peers, here's those pools we were talking about. And then here's some different clocks. Now this is kind of interesting right here. Stratum 16. Okay. That means nothing's happening. And if you look over here, there's no delay, no offset, very little jitter. You can't even reach it. Um, usually I've seen it marked as stratum 15, meaning there's nothing there. And I believe that's because it's a pool, because it looks like it's then pa passing us off to other servers, which are stratum twos and stratum ones. <clears throat> so what's a stratum? Stratum zero would be like that cesium atomic clock. That is a, an origin of time. It's a stratum zero. Something that talks directly to it, like this, is a stratum one, and then say this server is a stratum two, this server may talk to, the, to a different stratum one. That's typically how that goes. Pretty nifty. 
it looks like time is a flowing try to connect with some other systems and get date uh, and time so I'm gonna connect from my Mac and I'm gonna run on um, this SN SNTP command uh, I used brew to download it to my Mac so we run it and I have to put in my password And there it is, uh, offset, etc. in the server we got it from. So if we say date, that's an accurate date. And then we're going to do this on the, this is actually the RetroPie arcade game. And we're just going to run NTP date from here. Same idea. Taking a little time. There we go. It adjusted from the time server. There's an offset, pretty small. So there we go. I think we have proven that it is working. Joy.